In this video, I'm gonna tell you the top five things that you have to do to your dirt bike after every single ride. It may be four things, I don't know for sure. I, I'm just gonna kinda of like make it up as I go along. First thing you're gonna to want to do is wash the bikes. This isn't just so that the bikes look good and you impress people when you get to the track, but also it's gonna be easier for you to look over the bikes and see what needs to be done if all the dirt and mud is off. Our friends at Slick Products sent us this package to help clean the bikes. They have a three-step process. I've actually never done it. I've never used these, so we're gonna open it up here in a second. But before we do the three-step process, I'm gonna go ahead and use a light power washer to get all the dirt off so that these products can do their job and clean clean the bikes. Before you turn on the water, you want to make sure you plug the exhaust. You don't want any water getting into your pipe. They make exhaust plugs. You can probably get one at your local dealer. They're like 10 bucks or for the same price, you can get about 50 of these Nerf gun bullets. This is an electric pressure washer. It's not too powerful, so it should be able to get the dirt off without causing any damage to the bikes, but you don't want to go at it crazy. We're just mainly focused on just getting the majority of the dirt off the bike. Hey, you want some bubble wrap, Mason? Have at it. You know what to do. All right, we got a bubble wrap. We got a soap brush. Uh, looks like a hand wash glove. Then make sure it fits. Yep, just my size. <laughs> you good, bro? Sweet! A t-shirt. Some microfiber cloth. And the phone gun. Okay, so like I mentioned, there's a three-step process. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna spray the bikes with the off-road wash, let it sit, wash it off, followed by the degreaser. The degreaser we're gonna put on metal parts, breaks down crime, grime. Sorry, not crime. It's tough on crime and on grime. Safe on surfaces, won't leave film residue. Okay, so let me point out that Slick products, all their products are biodegradable, non-corrosive, so it's not gonna eat away at anodized parts. And then after this, then the third step to the process is the multi-surface shine and protectant. So this, you're gonna spray on your plastics to keep them shiny and looking good as well as protected. So we wanna fill soap up to that line right there. Okay, I'm gonna hold this here, squeeze it into the bottle, to right here, go. Keep going, keep going. Where's the line, keep, where's the line? Keep going, keep going. A lot more. Perfect. So at this point we got the bike sprayed down. As you can see, they're kind of clean, but if you look close up, there's still a lot of dirty spots. They're still not perfect. These bikes aren't showroom ready. They're not Instagram worthy yet. Especially on the backside, you can see Luke's bike, it's running rich. So there's a lot of oil spray that came out of the exhaust. So let's see what Slick Products can do. Thank you. 
At this point, I'm gonna take a three to five minute break while Slick Products goes to work, eats away at the dirt and grime, and then we'll check back and see what it looks like in a second. A little longer than a few minutes later. There's still a lot of gunk here on the fender, but I think this brush should help. You're not gonna get the bikes 100% dry with just a towel. I would recommend grabbing a leaf blower and just go over it. All the crevices, all the little tiny holes that collect water, you don't want that sitting there and then rusting. I would focus on the brake caliber as well as like tiny holes like that. The chain also, do your best to get all the water off the chain. Again, just to try to avoid rust. The bikes are like, I don't know, 95% clean right now. There's a few trouble spots. So let's go grab the degreaser and see if that does the trick. I'd say the bikes look pretty clean. What do you think? Yeah? No? The third and final step is to spray on the shine and protectant. Shines renew surface, protects against corrosion, reduces mud adhesion. You still here? You want some protectant? I could spray it on the rest of your tail. All right, there it is. That is the very simple three-step process from Slick Products. The bikes are spick and span. They're looking clean. At this point, you're much more easily able to look the bikes over, see what needs to be done. It's a lot easier to work on the bikes now that they're clean. If you guys want to uh, try Slick Products for yourself, it's very simple. I've seen, actually, I've seen their products in local dealers, so check your local dealer, or you can go to their website, slickproductsusa.com. Or if you want to help our channel out, you could just go to our our affiliate link below at RockyMountainATVMC.com. Of course, that gives us a little bit of a commission, so we always appreciate that, right, man? Right? Yeah, you know what's up. All right, <laughs> time to sit down and rest for the rest of the video. So, all right, how many how many tips was that so far? One, <laughs> one tip so far. I had some good points though, right? I had a few good tips. All right, let's bust out four more. Um, number two, the second thing that you want to make sure you do after each ride or before the next ride is change the oil. Now, this is one of those things that, you know, some people change their oil after every single ride. Some people wait four or five rides or whatever. How often should you change the oil in your bike? That's between you, God, and your manual. Okay, so when my kids were first starting out, I didn't change the oil very much. They were just learning. They would barely get into the power band, so I really didn't think they were putting too much wear and tear on the engine. Now, they're riding a lot better. They're starting to get on it a lot more. So typically for me, I change the oil once a week, which usually works out to be about three, every three rides or so. But like I was saying, for you, I'm not gonna tell you how often you should change your oil, but I will say this. Changing your oil is the way that you show your dirt bike love. So do it often. Number three, 
check your tire pressure, especially if you just got a new bike or if you just got a new tire put on by a dealership. I think they put way too much air pressure in the tires. It seems like they do like 20 pounds a lot of the times. For instance, when we bought Mason 65, we went straight from the dealership to the track and he rode it for the first time on a tight arena cross track. I didn't even think to uh, check the tire pressure, but I noticed he was struggling and I was kind of worried because he was sliding out a lot in the turns. Um, he just, he seemed to be uh, getting on it too hard, slipping the back wheel and stuff. I was like, oh man, this, I don't know about this bike. This might not work out to be a good idea for him. Never even thought to check the tire pressure. When we got home, I checked it and it was at 20 pounds on a little 65, which is way too much. So if you think about it, like you are spending a lot of time, a lot of money and putting a lot of work into your engine to make your bike as fast as you can, especially in the mini ranks. I know a lot of Moto Dads put a lot of money into uh, getting a race engine professionally done to uh, give their kids the most competitive edges they can. And if you're doing that, you're putting all that money and time into your engine, and then you're not running the proper tire pressure, you're wasting all that money that you put in, into uh, the bike because you're not gonna be, your bike's not gonna be riding as good as, as it should, probably even with a stock engine. So. Make sure you check the tire pressure at least before you try it or every couple rides. Okay, what are we on? Four, um, shoot. So number four, uh, just go through the bike and tighten down all the bolts. Um, check your manual for specs and torque ratios, but tighten down all the bolts. The important ones like the axles, the fork clamps, I always wanna make sure that those are tight, and spokes. People don't think about spokes too much, but especially on new bikes, spokes come loose very quickly, and when the spokes are loose, it's very easy for your wheel to get out of true. So uh, it's very simple when you tighten your spokes, just uh, pick one spot. I pick right next to the valve stem because it's easy to remember. Tighten the first one if it needs to be tightened about a quarter of a turn or half a turn and then skip two and go to the next one and follow that pattern all the way around the wheel. So basically you're going to be tightening every fourth spoke and then you start all the way over on the second spoke, skip two, go to the next one. So you're skipping every every four, and that's the best way that I've seen, and I've seen several videos recommend that, to uh, tighten your wheel and make sure that all the spokes are evenly tightened so your wheel stays true. Lastly, for this one, I'll ask you guys what, what you think or what you use. When you clean your air filter, at least check it. At least check your air filter after every single ride, especially if you're riding somewhere that's dry and dusty. Check your air filter and change it. I used to use um, grease and I'd grease the outside. Uh, I'd grease the rim of the air filter, but I stopped doing that because it feels like the grease is more likely to drop into the air box and into the engine. I think the air filters on modern bikes are good enough where you don't need to use grease. That's my opinion. But I've also struggled with finding a cleaner that I like. I've tried several different cleaning products and I don't feel like anything cleans as good as gas. I've used other products. I'm not gonna show you or point them out, but I've used other products to clean the air filters and they never seem clean enough and then I always just end up using gas in the end to clean the air filter. So if you guys have any recommendations for air filter cleaner, uh, let me know. But it's just one of those things, again, if you want your bike to be running at its peak performance, you're gonna wanna make sure your air filter's clean. Okay, so there you go, there's some basic tips. Um, some are, are pretty basic, so uh, you might be like no duh, or maybe you did learn anything. If you didn't learn anything, sorry, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what I missed. Let me know if there's anything else that you'd recommend other people do uh, to their bike in between each and every ride.